Hello, everyone. My presentation is on uh, coke drum bulging reduction using the staggered seam design. My name is Mahmoud Samman. I am the president of Houston Engineering Solutions. And I've been uh, working in uh, coke drum uh, analysis and troubleshooting for about 30 years. And this presentation is about a new technology that we recently developed. And we uh, performed some analysis to uh, verify the effectiveness of the technology that we're sharing with you for the first time. So overview, I'll talk about shell bulging in general. I'll talk about uh, the types of bulges, the uh, vertical plate design, the staggered seam design. We'll talk about the analysis of uh, staggered seam design and then recent developments on the technology. First, when we talk about shell bulging, uh, this is a major problem that we've had for decades. As you see in the photo, uh, some bulges can get drastically large, can get uh, very significant, they can cause uh, up to 15, 12 inches of radial growth. Now we have made a lot of changes in industry, but despite all the design improvements, we still have a problem. And it might be even more severe today than it was in the past. Well, to in as an introduction, bulging types are not all the same. Uh, we have a paper that we published in 2016 that talks about the nine different types of bulges that we experience in coke drums. So if we go back to 1958, the uh, famous paper by Wheeler and Rapaski, it referred to bulging as a constrained balloon phenomenon. It's like you have a balloon that is constrained by, by the seam welds and it looks like this. It looks like the Michelin man, if you would. And this is the, uh, the classic type of bulging that we had seen for a long time, for decades. The recent study that we performed uh, shows that not all bulges are like this. There are significant, uh, significantly different types of bulges that uh, we can develop in coke drums that are completely different from this one type that was mentioned in 1958. So the 958, the 1958 type of bulging is the seam bulging, which is the first one in the nine types that you see on the left. To address uh, bulging, uh, we have two unconventional uh, shell designs. One is the vertical plate design and the other one is the staggered seam design. So the vertical plate design is a patented method uh, by CBNI that was developed, uh, was published in 2001. And what it does is uh, it minimizes the number of circumferential welds by using vertical plates. So uh, the use of that vertical plate uh, is aimed at minimizing circ welds and therefore minimizing seam bulges. Now, due to technical limitations, uh, we understand that we can't make coke drums with a single uh, you know, vertical plate that goes all the way from top to bottom. That's why in all the drums that I have seen, there's always a circ weld in the middle of the drum. So it's, it's reduced to one circ weld instead of six or seven or 11 or 12 circ welds that we see in some coke drums. Now this has definitely uh, reduced 
the frequency and severity of this type of bulging, seam bulging. But because we have to have that one circ weld in the, in the middle, the problem is not completely eliminated. So this is the background of the staggered seam design that we patented, uh, our company Houston Engineering patented uh, a couple of years ago. And the way it works is instead of having the conventional uh, weld uh, of you know having circumferential welds and then staggering the vertical welds, what we do here is we stagger the circumferential welds. So as you see in, on the right side uh, of this slide, if we open up the coke drum, we will see that the circ welds are not continuous. So the vertical weld is continuous, but the circ weld is not. And you see that it, uh, you know, it it staggers at every vertical weld. So the the result of this is that circumferential welds are not all the way around the drum. What that does is it minimizes the effectiveness or the severity of the restraining that a circ weld does to the drum. So referring to the constrained balloon description or the, the type of bulging that was acknowledged from 1950s, well, by staggering these welds, we don't have a continuous restraint or a continuous belt on the coke drum. So the restraining is not uniform. So how does this staggered weld, uh, staggered seam design, how does it change bulging patterns? So what we did is we, uh, we performed an analysis and we compared the staggered seam design to the conventional design. So first to keep in mind the causes of uh, seam bulging is the uh, usually two, two factors, the weld to base strength ratio and the weld reinforcement. So the weld to base strength ratio represents the ratio of the yield strength of the weld divided by the yield strength of the base metal. The weld reinforcement is the additional thickness, is the crown that we usually have, or the cap that we usually have on circ welds, which make them thicker. In this analysis that we performed, we, we used a weld reinforcement of 10% and we used two different strength ratios a 10% and a 50%. Uh, and usually in most cases, we see that the weld to base strength ratio falls in between those two, between 10% and 50%. And weld reinforcement of 10% is uh, very, very typical and common, unless you're dealing with high quality, high end coke drums that grind welds flush with no reinforcement, which which are the best, obviously, but they're not very typical. Uh, bulging simulation can be performed in two ways. Um, one is using pressure where we induce uh, plasticity in coke, drum, uh, in, in coke drum wall by applying high pressure until we exceed the elastic limit and start to develop plastic deformation. Uh, the second and the more complex one is using coke resistance, uh, which is, it, it takes more effort to perform and it, uh, it's something that we're planning to do in the future. So this analysis that I'm presenting today is specific to the pressure simulation approach where bulging is simulated by applying ex, uh, uh, high pressure. Uh, to, to get to that plasticity limit. 
Okay, so the scope of the analysis is we took uh, three designs and we compared them. We used a conventional design uh, with four shell courses in addition to the top and bottom uh, shell courses that don't have a vertical uh, wells just to uh, transition to the uh, top head and bottom head. And then uh, we used a three leaf and a four leaf staggered weld design. What that means is the in a three leaf design, we have three vertical welds. In a four leaf design, we have four vertical welds, as you see. Uh, the one on the right side, of course, is the four leaf design. And the staggering is because it's four leaf, then we go 50% uh, distance between uh, two circumferential weld segments. The three leaf design, we stagger it, but using one third of the distance uh, between two circ welds. So we go 30, uh, we go one third on the, the adjacent leaf and then another one third on the leaf after that. These are the three designs that we are evaluating. And what we, what we do with this analysis is we initially we pressure them all the way up until the plasticity is uh, developed and then we remove the pressure and we see the resulting displacement in each one of them. So this is, a con this is the conventional design. I took the, the two shell courses in the middle and what you're looking at here is the uh, radial displacement uh, in, in the middle of that drum. Uh, red represents the maximum radial displacement and dark blue represents the least radial displacement. So as you see in this particular analysis, uh, we have uh, developed uh, 1.22 inches as the minimum radial displacement and the maximum radial displacement is 1.548. So that's how the, uh, that's what the, the difference is between the, the, uh, the displacement at the seam versus displacement at the middle of a shell course. Now this, uh, this plot shows the, uh, the same radial displacement plot with contour, color contour, uh, that does exactly the same thing. But in this case, we're looking at the minimum uh, of 0.84 inches and a maximum radial displacement of 1.5 inches. And as you see, the displacement pattern, it, it flows from one leaf to the next leaf. both for the maximum and the minimum. So there is a more, there is a little bit more continuity, a, a little bit of continuity in this design. Now, the next one is the four leaf staggered seam design. Well, what we're seeing here is the minimum uh, radial displacement of 0.87 and the maximum radial displacement of 1.42. Well, the, uh, the interesting part here is that there is no interaction between the bulges uh, like we've seen in the previous one. This is more, um, uh, it shows the bulges because the staggering is half the distance as opposed to a third of the distance. The uh, bulging is more separate and independent uh, from one leaf to the next. So if we take uh, the data and we plot it on a chart, what we see is that the, uh, the 
three designs, the conventional design, the three leaf and the four leaf design, they vary uh, as we go from 110% of the weld to base strength ratio to the 150%. Like I said, in most cases that we see, we're somewhere in between those two limits uh, for the drums that are actually built today. So the x-axis is that weld to base strength ratio. The y-axis is the relative bulging, which is the, the, uh, uh, the amount of additional displacement that we get uh, from those radial displacement plots. Uh, as you see, when the, ratio, when the weld to base strength ratio is very tight, it's only 10% difference, the numbers are uh, you know, the closer. So the relative bulging is a lot less, which is it's very understandable because the, there is more matching of material properties. But when we look at the a higher end at 50% uh, increase in, uh, weld, uh, in, in weld yield strength, uh, we see a lot more relative bulging. But in all cases, the conventional design shows the most bulging, followed by the three leaf staggered seam design. And then the best of the three is consistently the four leaf staggered seam design. Uh, these are the actual numbers. And what we're looking at here is the amount of reduction in uh, bulging. So we're comparing them, the three leaf and the four leaf, comparing them to the uh, conventional design. And we're quantifying that reduction in bulging. So the conclusions we have is that the analysis confirmed that staggered seam design reduces bulging compared to conventional shell design. Uh, that is clear uh, from the analysis. And using pressure loading for the simulation of bulges, uh, we were able to achieve up to 27% bulge reduction uh, uh, compared to uh, conventional shell design. We also confirmed that the four leaf design results in a more significant uh, bulging reduction than the uh, three leaf design. So that's the, these are the conclusions of the study. Our recent development, we're announcing this for the first time uh, and it came in very late uh, this month in October when we prepared the presentation. Uh, this patented, the shell uh, design has been licensed to Sumitomo Heavy Industries in Japan uh, with an agreement that we both signed uh, just a few days ago. So I'm happy to announce that. And uh, I'm sure they, uh, they would love to share with you the uh, studies that they performed uh, to, uh, to show how the uh, fabrication process compares to the standard fabrication process of conventional uh, coke drums and discuss the uh, implications of this change. Uh, with that, I come to the end of uh, my presentation and uh, I would like to recap what we talked about. Uh, first, we had uh, a brief introduction to shell bulging. Then we talked about the types of bulges that we can have uh, in a coke drum. Uh, we discussed the vertical plate design, the patented vertical plate design, and then the patented staggered seam design. I showed you the analysis of the staggered seam design and the results we obtained. And then we finally shared with you some of the recent developments of the agreement between uh, Houston Engineering and Sumitomo. Uh, that's the end of it. And I look forward to getting any questions that you may have on this presentation. Thank you.